Hey everyone, this is Ross. Today's video, we're finally doing the video that we've been talking about for months, um, really since the spring. We talked about this method, how I'm planting all these trees very closely, very densely. What my method of protection would be in the wintertime, because it's not enough to simply just plant a fig tree in the ground. You need to come up with a escape plan, basically. Uh, here in this climate, it's just too cold. And if these trees were to be left on their own out here in the elements, we get down to zero degrees Fahrenheit. That's just too low for the large, overwhelmingly, we're talking about 99.9% .9 of varieties. Zero degrees Fahrenheit is too much. There is some varieties which we decided we were gonna test and then we said, you know what? I wanna guarantee myself good production next year. And this is essentially what this winter protection is gonna do for me. It's kind of like a mass form of winter protection. You got a lot of trees. I think this is the best method. Um, it's the least time consuming. It's also effective. And essentially all we're doing here is you can kind of see these little mounds. These were all the trees that we had. In fact, some I still need to put more straw or leaves on. You can see this guy over here is pretty much bare. And you can also see if we zoom in down at the base here is these little white speckles. This is essentially a form of vole and rat control that I've put down around these trees. It's um, this stuff right here in the bucket. And this is essentially uh, the chemical in here is zinc phosphide. And it really helps get rid of, it kills all the voles and rats. Uh, so what we're doing is really effectively encouraging voles and rats and rodents to find a home in this location. Um, when you pile up a bunch of wood chips, you pile up a bunch of straw or leaves or anything like that, it kind of encourages voles to say, all right, well, I can make a home there. There's a lot of protection there. We can barrel around. Also with the fact that we have a lot of trees underneath here, this is wood for them to eat. They eat that bark, they eat the bark, they eat the roots, and then the tree dies. Um, so it's really important, I think, to put down some form, of, some form of rodent protection. If you forget this, I don't know if this method really, you could say, is effective. Um, because whether or not you do have rodents or you don't, um, you never know. One of these years, it may just, they may just show up and you'll be kind of screwed. You may even lose a lot of trees, especially if some of these are young as mine are. So just put down, I think this is a pretty uh, effective product here, the zinc phosphate. What you don't want this product to do is you don't want it to get wet. If it gets wet, you got yourself an issue. The other thing that's happening here is that with the straw, I, you could say, all right, well, Ross, why do we have to throw a tarp on everything? There's the tarp that we're gonna use. I have another tarp over here. Um, and that's kind of the order of this, right? Is that we put down the, the rodent protection, then we put down the straw or leaves or mulch, any kind of mulch, any insulative material, because the earth is a heat source, right? The earth stays pretty warm. Even if it's zero degrees outside, the earth will continue to stay warm. However, it can drop pretty low. But if you insulate the earth, the earth will stay warm and the heat rises from the earth. And if you trap that heat in with this mulch and with these tarps, you're also creating a nice little microclimate. We're basically creating a house for each individual fig tree. And that's why this method is so effective. The, the issue though is that if this mulch, the mulch is not enough. We need to have a tarp on top. Because if the mulch gets wet, we're really increasing our chances of rot around the bark. The bark can rot if you have wood chips. A lot of tree guys, they'll tell you, if you pile up your wood chips too close around the bark of your trees, around the trunks of your trees, you can kill your tree because the bark will rot and then the cambium's dead and then your tree ends up dying. Unlikely as that is, it can happen 
I find fig trees are pretty good with that overall. We are going to be doing a method that actually is risking that whole process. There's a method that we're going to show you guys in another video that essentially we put a, a chicken wire fencing around a fig tree just like this except we instead of having a tarp over top of this we fill in a chicken wire thing a stakes in the ground so it doesn't blow away and we fill in that little that little ring of chicken wire with all the mulch and that mulch over the course of the season keeps the tree warm and insulated the issue is because there's nothing covering that chicken wire rain is getting in and that rain is then getting this mulch very wet and encouraging rot so here's the key with this is that we don't want this mulch this straw to get wet because if it does it's going to rot the bark so the the tarp here is a really great tool to keep that mulch or that rain away and keep that mulch dry it also keeps the rodent poison dry so it's, uh, it's important, it does a double effect there. I don't care what you use, you know, you need to play around with this. It doesn't matter what materials you use, as long as you kind of get this formula right. Some sort of rodent protection, some sort of mulch, some sort of insulative material. It could be a building material, something you use in your house, it could be plastic, it could be a whole host of different things. Then you have to cover that to keep out the moisture if it is indeed going to rot the bark on your tree. Um, I had thought about putting the tarp down, um, putting the poison down first, then the tarp, and then the, the straw on top of that. I think that would work too, except because of the rat poison that I'm using, it can't get wet. and. Um, I think this is just working out better this way. I also had been afraid, a bit afraid that the, the mulch that was on top of the, the, uh, the tarp here would blow away. Um, so this is gonna be, I think, the best of both worlds. What we can do with this particular tarp, this thing I think is 25 feet long. We're gonna stretch it out here in a minute. 25 feet long by 12. So I can even double stack the tarp if I want. And what I mean by that is get myself two layers of tarp, that's extra protection, extra insulation. I don't think we're going to need to do that. Um, this is a lot of insulation as is. Even just this straw would probably be enough. Um, I have a couple trees here that were not protecting, or at least very little protection over here on this particular tree. See how that branch is pretty much sticking up in the air? We're going to do a little test, a little experiment. We're going to see if some of these branches or some of these trees die with no protection from the straw or not. Um, we're going to find out exactly what temperature this whole issue or there will be an issue at. You know what I mean? Um, I know for sure we need to keep these trees above 15 degrees Fahrenheit all winter. Is this tarp enough to keep these trees above 15 by itself? I don't know. Do I need the straw? Do I need both? Can I get away with one or the other? I don't know, we're gonna find out. There's a little bit of an experiment. So 15 degrees is really the key there. And um, that's what we're doing. That's really that simple. What I'm gonna do now is really just lay this tarp over top. You guys can watch. Uh, we're not gonna really film this any, or we're not gonna, I'm not gonna have any audio further for this part of the video. But uh, if you, you learn something from this, guys, Check out our blog, uh, figboss.com. Subscribe to the channel. Um, check out our fig cutting listings on FigBid. All that's in the description. And um, I hope you guys have a successful winter with your fig tree. Stay tuned for more winter protection videos on different methods that we're going to be doing this year.
Well, guys, the key to any video here, the success of any good video is uh, good preparation. So that's kind of it. I mean, that was, that was pretty quick, right? I mean, I had to unravel the whole thing, get it to the uh, right shape, and also had to turn it inside out, because if you notice, the inside of this is silver, which reflects a lot of heat, a lot of that sunlight, whereas the brown is gonna heat up a lot better and uh, probably insulate a lot better. So, interesting little point there. Uh, the next step here is really just to put on these cinder blocks, keep this thing in place. And that's, that's really it, which uh, is really simple because every single tree <laughs> has about two cinder blocks on it. Ain't that a, a beaut how this all worked out and how simple this was. So, man. Uh, yeah, that's one method here. The, uh, this is, I guess, the cut and cover method, if you want to give it a name. And we'll talk to you guys soon, all right? Uh, take care, everyone.